I want to, um, talk a little bit more about Tucker. When he was sacked, I didn't know what it, I, I don't know if anyone knows what it really was. Did you see Bill O'Reilly's comments on it? I, I wonder if you can find those quickly. Bill O'Reilly, who used to be with Fox and was sacked, if I recall, over a Me Too moment. Uh, and he was a huge star there, really big. Um, so he's got his own show now, and he, or maybe he was talking about, maybe he was on another show. Yeah, maybe he was here. Let's just watch this. Here's Bill O'Reilly. Uh, and the funny thing is, I think that is uh, Chris Cuomo, the former CNN host. There's a lot of former hosts uh, around, some of them for Me Too reasons. Let's hear what Chris has to say. Joining me now, Bill O'Reilly, the biggest star in the history of Fox News, had the number one show there. Carlson uh, was riding that wake until today. What do you make of the announcement, Brother Bill? Well, uh, you didn't refer to me as a dog, did you, um, with the Hunter Thompson quote? I actually did some uh, reporting today. It was refreshing because usually I'm analyzing, but I had a report, find out what happened to... Uh, tell the news nation audience not to believe 90 percent of what they're hearing, as you pointed out. So today, um, as every day in the TV news business, the producers of the Tucker Carlson program and all other news shows were having their morning meeting, laying out what was going to be on this evening. All right. In the middle of that meeting, they got word that their host was not coming to work ever again. All right. So all of this BS about, well, the decision was made last week or it was made during the Dominion. That's all not true. The decision was made Sunday evening. OK. And there were two reasons why. But I'll get to that in a moment. So Fox News did not want to remove Tucker Carlson because, as you pointed out, he was the second highest rated program on the network next to the five, and he was the most well-known individual host. So they didn't want to move him out. But there are lawsuits coming on the wake of Dominion. They lost 800 million plus on Dominion. And now you have Smartmatic coming up and you have two individual lawsuits, actually one filed and one that may be filed. And that was the key. So one of uh, Tucker Carlson's producers apparently taped a whole bunch of stuff. Her lawyer went into the Fox attorneys and said, unless you pay so-and-so some money, um, we're going to sue you. And Fox said, we're not paying. So they filed suit in New York City and they had the tapes and those tapes may be released to the public. All right. And they're not good tapes for the Carlson program. The second thing was last night on 60 Minutes. Ray Epps, you may remember that name, said to the audience, Tucker Carlson ruined my life and my family's life by accusing me of having some kind of provocative role in the January 6th riots at the Capitol. That was setting Epps up for a massive lawsuit against Fox News and uh, Tucker Carlson. So that's three lawsuits we know about, and there'll be more by shareholders who are angry about the $800 million settlement, and they're going to go after the Murdochs and the board of directors. Faced with that, the board of directors said, we got to start cleaning this up. So Dan Bongino was the first domino to fall, even though he wasn't involved with the Dominion thing. They couldn't get to a contract settlement with him. He's gone. And then Carlson, because of the impending litigation, was harpooned this morning. Carlson didn't know. I mean, it wasn't like it was a discussion. Same thing with Lemon at CNN. He didn't know. It just happened. And that's uh, the nature of television news, the most wicked industry in the United States of America. Uh, I, I don't believe, believe it. That the I don't believe it. Of Thanks for showing that. And listen, Bill O'Reilly obviously has connections and sources at Fox, but I don't believe uh, those explanations. For one thing, uh, that Ray Epps 
obviously was a provocateur. He's on tape saying, we storm, we go in. That he completely was. The, the question is, is he or is he not an FBI agent? The FBI won't really answer. They're very mystical about the whole thing. They won't explain why they didn't arrest him. I think that everything Fox and every other commenter said was fair comment and probably true. And um, the point about other looming lawsuits, first of all, I don't think Tucker was the main promoter of some of these theories about Dominion voting. But even if he was, firing someone today isn't going to get the company off the hook for a legal problem that happened two years ago. In fact, if anything, it'll make it harder to defend because is Tucker going to be as cooperative with Fox News as he would have been if he were still there? I don't buy the explanation by Bill O'Reilly. I mean, if someone does something wrong legally, and I, I don't think Tucker has, I don't know about this recording, this tape that they're referring to, um, that doesn't stop being a problem if you fire someone. Uh, what they did is what they did. I mean, how you, uh, I don't know. I just, I just, I don't believe it. I think that's an attempt to make it look like Tucker was screwing up. I think that's someone leaking rumors against Tucker, leaking it to Bill O'Reilly. I mean, I don't know if Bill O'Reilly and Tucker were friends. They were certainly competitors. So I, I do not believe that. Now, the Van Vanity Fair has a story today saying it was a Christian commentary that Tucker Carlson gave at a prayer talk. Let me read a little bit of it. Tucker Carlson's prayer talk may have led to Fox News ouster. That stuff freaks Rupert out, Rupert Murdoch. Fox Corp chair Rupert Murdoch is said to have balked at Carlson's remarks in a Friday night speech, driving another theory about the primetime star's abrupt exit. He doesn't like all the spiritual talk, said a source. Now, does Vanity Fair have a good source in Fox News? I don't know. Could be. 24 hours after Fox News ousted its highest rated host, the network has yet to explain one of the most shocking de defenestrations in cable news history. I'm not going beyond the release. A Fox News spokeswoman texted yesterday when I asked her for comment. In this information void, multiple theories about why Fox fired Carlson circulated in the media. It was followed from the $787 million Dominion settlement. Punishment for vulgar text messages published in Dominion court filings. Or a consequence of former Fox producer Abby Grossberg's lawsuit, which alleged Carlson oversaw a hostile work environment. Fox News has vowed to vigorously defend the company against Grossberg's unmeritorious legal claims. By the way, I learned yesterday that Abby Grossberg never actually met Tucker Carlson. And didn't work in the office. So I'm not quite sure uh, how he fostered that environment, but we'll see in the court. And that comes back to my point. Let's say all those things about Tucker were correct. All the allegations were true. Firing him, I mean, I, I guess it's a way of saying we don't want this problem anymore. But it's not uh, a time machine that can undo uh, problems that have already occurred. Anyways, let me say this about Tucker. I was, I was talking to a Quebec uh, radio show about it this morning. I learned, uh, I think it was the Wall Street Journal that published that, uh, you know how much Tucker was making a year, Olivia? I heard it was 20 million, which is a lot of dough. Uh, I mean, that's a lot of money. And I, um, and he, I understand he was renegotiating and he, it was probably being negotiated up, right? Um, and then there's perks. I mean, they would be paying. They would be paying his security. They would be paying other things. Twenty million bucks. Do you think that he could get a million subscribers if he set up a channel of his own somewhere, whether it was on Rumble or with Glenn Beck's organization or with Daily Wire? He would never go on YouTube because YouTube is is beholden to uh, Big Pharma and, and Tucker's at odds with them. But um, do you doubt that Tucker could get one million people to sign up for 10 bucks a month? And if you do the math on that, that's $100 million, $120 million a year. 
even if he only got half a million people to sign up. And I think he could. Now, he would need someone who was taking care of the business infrastructure, but there's a lot of people who could do that. Like I say, you could join an existing operation, Daily Wire, Glenn Beck, the two that come to mind. You could go straight to Rumble. They would do a deal for you like Steven Crowder has done uh, with them. I think that Tucker, from a money point of view, could wake, make well more than $20 million. Um, and I think that if he were to join, create his own organization, it would be very large. And he would have complete freedom. The only thing he would lose would be access to the cable subscribers who get Fox. But how many people are watching Fox on their cable TV as opposed to clips on the internet? Remember, Fox was moving towards a subscription service called Fox Nation. That's where the, their Canada documentary was going to run. I think that Tucker is actually going to be bigger than he was. Because I think that Fox is beholden to the cable news model. They were trying to get off it by digital subscription. I think if Tucker went digital only and really pushed to sell, pushed his customers to subscribe. I think, I mean, I don't, even, I don't even think he's really motivated by money. I suppose everyone's motivated by money. If you have children, you want to leave them as much money as you can, I suppose. So I'm not saying he's not motivated by money, um, but I don't think that's his primary mission in life. And even if it was, I think he's, he's achieved it. I mean, the guy who's making 20 million bucks a year that, that adds up pretty quickly. There's only so much you can spend. I, I saw it at the corner of my eye. Uh, the Daily Mail had a video of him just puttering around. I think he lives, I think he's got two homes. One, uh, I think, in Maine and one in Florida. Uh, someone posted, uh, Tyler Carden, in fact, of, of GB News, posted a clip from the Daily Mail. Yeah, why don't you put that up there? Um, I guess that's him on his little golf cart tootling by in, uh, in Florida. So it looks like he's doing okay, taking some downtime, staying normal and healthy. And why not? Uh, I hear that he's going to have his contract paid out. So, I mean, of course, I mean, you, you, you're not going to fire Tucker Carlson for cause. You're just going to fire him. So, he, he can make a move whenever he wants. He's probably waiting, thinking. I see some people saying he should run for president. I don't think that's a good idea. I think that his talents are as a broadcaster, analyst, reporter, commentator. Running for public office is a completely different skill set and temperament and lifestyle. You're on the road every day. Um... You have to, like, it's it's a very much a grassroots one-on-one -on -one project. I mean, how many hands do you have to shake? How many people do you have to talk to? How many small towns do you have to crisscross? It's a different activity, different lifestyle, different uh, routine. And um, it's not for everyone. I think Tucker is made for TV, and he would it would be madness for him to leave. And by the way, you run for president, you're not making 20 million bucks a year, I'll tell you that. It'll be very exciting to see where he ends up next. That's a clip from something we call Rebel News Daily. It's our daily live stream hosted by my friend David Menzies, but the show also includes a rotating cast of hosts and special guests, including me. It's a great way for us to talk about the news of the day as the news is happening in an unscripted fashion, and it's an awesome way for you to interact with us as well. We stream every weekday, 1 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Mountain, wherever you find Rebel News. See you there.